Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Harriet Tubman Square. My name, yes, that deserves a round of applause. Let's go. My name is Marcy DePina, and I'm the executive director of the Newark City Far Parks Foundation. And I'm happy to be your MC for today. This is a beautiful, glorious day. We're so excited to be able to announce here on our Juneteenth, our Monday of Juneteenth, this momentous occasion to officially rename Washington Park into Harriet Tubman Square. And also we are announcing, yes, thank you the creation of the Newark Arts and Education District. First, I'd like to acknowledge all of our dignitaries that are here with us today. Our mayor, the Honorable Raz J. Baraka. Our first lady, Tammy Murphy. Congressman Donald Payne Jr. Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker. Commissioner President Richardson. Councilwoman LaMonica McIver. Council President Quintana, Councilman Gonzalez, and Councilman Ramos. So first, I want to tell you guys just a little bit about the Arts and Education District. On behalf of Victoria Walker, who's not with us today, she is coordinating this effort, spearheading it with her warrior self. This district will serve as a culturally and economically diverse neighborhood right here in our downtown Newark, New Jersey. The map, which is located just on the, the pedestal of this monument here, um, you can refer to that so you can actually see the district. And as you can see, it will begin at Broad Street Station, which is just to my right, and will conclude at South Broad by Lincoln Park. So these two parks, Lincoln Park and Harriet Tubman Square, are really anchoring this arts and education district. The district will include arts and educational institutions, galleries, of course our downtown parks, restaurants, and our major transportation hubs. Our mission is to promote and celebrate these institutions and spaces that contribute to our city's cultural vibrancy. The district will be a home for arts and cultural programming for both residents and visitors to enjoy. So as we continue to work together to build an educated, equitable, and collaborative city, the long historical arts and cultural legacy will be preserved. So this just didn't come out of thin air, this idea of the arts and education district. Our very first speaker for today was the person who set it off. Allow me to introduce the CEO and director of the Newark Museum of Art, Linda Harrison. Thank you. Well, I want to um, welcome everyone and say good morning. We love that you are here in front of the Newark Museum of Art and the library. Okay, and Audible. All right, now it's, it, it goes on. I want to thank the mayor um, for um, his leadership in allowing the Newark Museum of Art uh, to be a part of today's announcement. Cultural districts matter, and they make a difference because of their multi-dimensional values, especially when those values are defined by equity, sustainability, and flexibility. Art is often thought of as a great connector, bringing together different cultures, neighborhoods, and even millennia. Art speaks to new possibilities and a better future. The Newark Museum of Art and all of my fellow cultural anchor leaders, cultural, educational, and commerce, they, they are partners that together we are all excited on the promise of art, education, and culture for all. Art is at the heart of our communities, of our economy, of our identity, and of our future. This newly established art and education district enables Newark to be a leader in our region, not only in our city, a keystone of our communities and a catalyst for our economy. The Newark Arts and Education Districts will radically change Newark's 
and redefine the quintessential Newark experience through the investment in art and the institutions that bring art and education to the public, we can initiate a transformation, a transformative new chapter in our region, one defined by growth and posterity. And we know that now is the time to embark on this profound and really historically important shift. It is a fundamental shift that we are moving forward. Now it not be a gathering, it would not be a gathering unless we all had a call and response, would you say? And so what I want you all to do is um, in the spirit of Juneteenth, say to me, this we love peace, we love peace. We love peace. Okay, then the next one I think is going to get a little bit more robust. Robust. We love power. We love power. We love peace. We love peace. We love art. We love art. Thank you all for being part of this experience. It's your participation that will make this cultural district a vibrant place to live work and play, and most importantly, be proud of. Thank you. Thank you, Linda. Nothing like a good call and response to set it off. Thank you. I see we have some more dignitaries that just arrived. Shout out to Councilwoman at Large, Reverend Roundtree. <laughs> I also want to acknowledge these incredible banners that you see around the park that were designed by graphic design students from our very own Rutgers University. And also here we have the designer of the new monument, the Harriet Tubman Monument, Nina Cook-John. It's all about collaboration. Uh, the spark to have this arts and education started with one word, one suggestion, but it really takes so many different institutions, people, um, and leaders in this community to make it happen. One of those such organizations is the Newark Alliance, which brings together the businesses of the city. So I'd like to introduce the CEO of the Newark Alliance, Evan Weiss. Thank you, and thank you, everybody, uh, for having me here today. And importantly, it, it's not just businesses. It's the major institutions of the city that make up the alliance, including the Newark Museum. It was at an alliance meeting where Linda made this initial suggestion in the context of the alliance talking about its three strategic priorities, one of which at that time was Halsey Street, building up Halsey Street into a destination city. Uh, or part of the city, known everywhere in America, and continuing to be an engine of economic activity, particularly for black and brown entrepreneurs. And so I, I want to see that that goal is realized, that this arts and education district is truly something that any of us could be anywhere in the world, and people would know it. So that's goal number one, is that this becomes a shining light that everyone can reference, and they're not talking about the airport, they're not talking about something else in North, they're talking about this. And I think the second thing I want to emphasize is that that comment was on March 22nd, and here we are at June 20th. That is fast. That is very fast in government time, that's very fast in corporate time, that's just very fast in time. And I think the urgency that Mayor Baraka is showing, the institutional leaders, the work that Audible has already done in making this a reality, that is what's going to make this real, maintaining that speed. And as the mayor said in an earlier meeting about this, moving from a word that someone had the courage to say and talk about in a forum with the city's leaders, and then all of us being here today representing so many different parts of what will make this real and doing it quickly and keeping the pressure on and making sure that we hold ourselves to building up this arts and education district as quickly as we can. So next year, we're gonna be here again, welcoming new monuments, welcoming new businesses, welcoming new institutions, events in this beautiful park. So thank you, I'm really looking forward to the rest of the program and we also wanna be held accountable as the representation of so many institutions in the city 
that we are deep in this with everybody here. Um, universities, hospitals, corporations, small business, big. That's what's critical. And I promise today to do whatever I can to make this initiative as powerful and as known everywhere in the world as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Evan. I want to also acknowledge our Director of Arts and Cultural Affairs, Fayemi Shakur. She represents the arts part of this Arts and Education District. And representing education, our very own Dr. Brown. So our next speaker represents a, a corporation that really has started to transform this neighborhood uh, through the Innovation Cathedral, headquartering here in Newark. Audible really has made a major change in our city. So please, everybody, welcome Vice President of Urban Innovation at Audible, Aisha Glover. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. There we go. Um, first, I just want to thank Mayor Baraka, Directors Shakur and Zapina for offering me an opportunity to speak today. As the Vice President of Urban Innovation at Audible, as Marcy mentioned, I have the privilege of thinking about what our role is as an anchor institution and the fastest growing employer in the city of Newark. We're proudly headquartered here and try to be thoughtful and deliberate about our investments in our neighborhood and in our neighbors. We're thrilled to collaborate to help amplify the meaning of the renaming of this park from Washington Park to Tubman Square and the contributions of trailblazers and fighters for freedom and liberation. Indeed, Audible is in the business of storytelling and amplifying underrepresented voices. We have the most diverse catalog in the entire world and create original content right here in Newark through Audible Studios. I share this because representation matters today, and quite frankly, it always has. And history is a critical and basic foundation for future growth, opportunity, and retribution. It is absolutely fitting that the new district being created is both for arts and education. As basic pillars, and an expression of our values. I've been saying this since I got to Newark seven years ago, there is no city quite like ours. And celebrating our past will allow us to all be collectively intentional about the stories we both create and share with the world. So before I close, I'd like to share an excerpt from Toni Morrison's The Sight of Memory. You know, they straightened out the Mississippi River in places to make room for houses and livable acreage. Occasionally, the river floods those places. Floods is the word they use. But fact is, it's not flooding. It is remembering where it used to be. Thank you. So I'll be back to speak later, but <laughs> I have a few things to say. Um, but I have the privilege of uh, introducing the first lady of this state, uh, Tammy Murphy. We thank her for her presence here in the city of Newark over and over again, fighting for many different things for our families. But more importantly, we thank her for being here on this Juneteenth day as we celebrate it federally, but we celebrated it also on, on Friday. We hung out on Friday as well. So thank her for being here and expressing uh, her alliance with us and making sure we make history here today. Thank you, Tammy Murphy. Hello, everyone. Um, it is an honor to be here in Newark um, to witness the renaming of Washington Park as Harriet Tubman Square and the creation of the Newark uh, Arts and Education District. Uh, I am grateful to Mayor Baraka um, for his kind intro introduction and the invitation to be a part of today's program, and of course for his unparalleled leadership of the city of Newark. Uh, there are many dignitaries here, so I think, I think I'm not going to um, 
fall into the trap of forgetting to name someone, so please know how grateful I am for, for all of you for being here. I also want to just say um, we do have some incredible speakers, so I have to give a shout out to uh, three who, um, who have I've worked with over the years, and that is namely Aisha Glover, great Toni Morrison quote, love that. Uh, obviously, Linda Harrison, and also um, Evan Weiss. Um, it's always great to be with them. Um, this year, we celebrate Juneteenth as an official state holiday for only the second time. Uh, and as we do so, it is critical that this holiday is recognized not as a day off, uh, but as a call to action, a reminder of what is at stake when we do not live the values we hold dear as Americans. And it's a celebration of the American heroes who risked their lives to exemplify those values. One such hero, obviously, was Harriet Tubman, a conductor on the Underground Railroad, who, after escaping slavery herself, returned more than a dozen times to rescue others and guide them through a terrifying and dangerous journey to freedom. Today, as Mayor Baraka renames this park in her honor, we, as New Jerseyans, can feel pride in our state's role in the Underground Railroad. At the same time, however, we cannot forget that New Jersey was the last of all the northern states to abolish slavery. There is no doubt that the effects of that evil continue to ripple through our communities today, making our work to expand opportunity in business, in education, and in home ownership, and to achieve equity in representation, equity in health outcomes, and so much more. It, this is not just important, but it is our moral imperative. And I am certain that the Newark Arts and Education District is going to be a great partner in this work. Uh, thank you for allowing me to share this special day, and congratulations again to the City of Newark. Thank you, First Lady Murphy. Thank you. Our next speaker is our Congressman, Donald M. Payne, Jr. Thank you and good afternoon. Is it afternoon yet? It's afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, it's an honor and a privilege for me to be here in my capacity as congressman from the 10th Congressional District of the state of New Jersey. And, um, you know, um, here in New Jersey, I guess we worked it out to be a four-day weekend. So the state had Juneteenth on Friday. Today is a federal holiday, so you got a four-day weekend out of it. So that's, but um, you know, we are uh, delighted to be here on this wonderful occasion. And I want to first thank the First Lady for being here of the state of New Jersey and also our leader here in Newark, the Honorable Raz J. Baraka, and the residents of the city of Newark and all of the special guests gathered here today uh, for this Juneteenth celebration and renaming of Washington Park to Harriet Tubman Square. Mayor Barack, I want to thank you for your courage and determination and unshakable faith. The actions you're taking today, along with uh, others, is uh, to create a better future for the people of the city of Newark and their prosperity is an attempt to right previous wrongs. Renaming Washington Park to Harriet Tubman Square honors the legacy and the spirit of Harriet Tubman a pioneer woman who was led by greater faith. This faith gave her the courage to spend her life rescuing the lives of innocent men and women from, and children from the bondage of slavery. My friends, during the darkest days of slavery, it was the faith of our precious ancestors that one day their descendants would be free which helped them deal with the unbearable crucial burden 
of enslavement. It was faith that instilled courage in our great-grandparents that allowed them to maintain dignity while enduring a hundred daily slights during Jim Crow. And again, it was faith throughout the painful trials of the Civil Rights Movement that pushed our parents and grandparents to secure the full measure of equal treatment under the law for themselves and their children, which changed America for the better. Harry Tubman's life and faith in freedom exemplifies the perseverance that has come, that has become the hallmark of the African American experience and the ongoing struggle for equality. And soon that spirit will forever be enshrined here in Harry Tubman Square. So I look forward to watching future generations gather here in Harry Tubman Square, cultivating and contributing to the artistic creativity that will surely foster social and political change for generations to come. I am committed to be a partner in that fight. Thank you for such a wonderful day that God has given to rename this park Harriet Tubman Square. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. These parks here in our city are really special because we live in a city. So for many of us, these are our backyards. These are our front yards. These are the spaces where we gather, where we come together, where the city, the entire city, comes and meets each other. So being able to honor um, the abolitionist movement that took place in the city in this way is truly remarkable. Our next speaker is Assemblywoman Cleopatra Tucker. It's truly an honor for me to be here this morning to, to the renaming ceremony of Washington Park to Harriet Tubman Square and launch our art and education district. Um, la on Sunday, we celebrated Juneteenth today. Today I have the privilege of continuing the celebration of Juneteenth and be a witness of what's going on here today as I stand here with all of you and Rare Maz Baraka, First Lady Tammy Murphy, and all the other elected officials. It is indeed an honor to be here for this renaming ceremony, to rename this beautiful place Harriet Tubman Square. And this has a significant importance to the, us as is our history on this very location was a part of the Underground Railroad. So this history making today is just a salute to what happened in the past, what's going to happen in our present and our future, to let people know that the great city of Newark is doing much pride and much investing in our city and our people and our community to make this city known nationally as well as all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, Assemblywoman. Our next speaker is the Commissioner President Richardson. Good morning. So the sky is clear and is indeed a bright day in the history of the city of Newark, New Jersey. As we continue to recognize the true heroes of America and to tell the story of America through the experiences of African Americans and other oppressed people. You may know that New Jersey was a slave state and also that it was the last northern state to end slavery. It is only right and fitting that the city of Newark, where the population is approximately 50% black or African American, designate this space in the heart of this city, in the heart of redevelopment, in the heart of learning and knowledge, adjacent to our renowned Newark Museum of Art and the Newark Public Library, 
to honor the most renowned woman freedom fighter, Harriet Tubman, who was born enslaved but refused to be a slave, and who put God and humanity before her own personal safety. And we all know the details of her life story. So this means a lot to me and to you, and I know that because you are here on this Juneteenth day. It is time for reflection and rededication to justice, equality, and reparations in education, in employment, in finance, and in all opportunities afforded to the privileged citizens of the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner President. So our next speaker has the great distinction of being the councilwoman of this very central ward. She's also the vice president of Newark City Council. Please everybody welcome our council vice president, LaMonica McIver. Good morning, I think it's still morning, yep. Still morning, Congressman. So, First, I want to thank our mayor. Um, I want to thank First Lady Tammy Murphy and all of the community partners, all of the dignitaries that are here today to witness this amazing event. Um, I was sitting over there on the end just thinking about what would I say when I get up here, and the one thing I thought about was that there were a lot of people praying that we wouldn't be here today. Just up until Friday, you know, there were a lot of people hoping we wouldn't do this today you know, fighting with us not to do this. People still talking about how we don't need to do this, you know, badgering us about honoring our ancestors and talking about what happened to us. Um, there were a lot of people who didn't want us to be here today for that. Um, and I'm happy we're here because God has always had his way. And we are here today for this amazing moment where we get, that's long overdue. Um, long overdue, but we are here to celebrate, and I'm, ex I'm so excited. I, I want to thank Marcy and everybody that I have the pleasure of working with every day to do the things that we do around arts and culture and parks. We do some amazing work in all of our city parks, but, spe but specifically to be here in Washington Park to be renaming it to Harriet Tubman Square. I'm so proud, and I can't wait for the new opportunities, the new activities, the activation to happen um, here, because we know that art trans transforms communities. We know education transforms communities. And we know all that we can do possible here. So I want to thank everyone that helped make this happen, who stood steadfast, especially our mayor. Especially our mayor, who stood steadfast for us to be here today and said, we're going to do this anyhow. And so thank you all for being here today to celebrate, to witness this, and definitely looking forward to everything to come. And it's a great day to celebrate my birthday today like this. So thank you. It's a great day indeed. Happy birthday, Councilwoman. Wow. Yeah, it's true that there has been a lot of opposition to this day. Um, and, and being the executive director of the Newark City Parks Foundation, we've faced that challenge head on. There's a lot of concerns about renaming this park, about what's going to happen here, the trees, which I'm happy to say, today we had a tree survey, so the trees have all been inspected. Um, but when we talk about liberation and we talk about freedom, yeah, the country of America got its freedom during the revolu excuse me, Revolutionary War, and Washington is the hero of that, but true freedom came through the abolishment of slavery. So it's really important that we acknowledge that, especially for the residents of the city, and especially for our children who look at these parks and look at the monuments throughout our city and often wonder where they are represented, where are their faces. So it truly is a glorious day. And now I'd like to welcome up to the podium to close us out our very own Honorable Mayor, Raj J. Baraka. Thank you, thank you. 
Marcy P. Seeger has a song, goes, which side are you on, boys? Which side are you on? <laughs> Y'all should go check that out. Since it's art and education, just want to thank everybody for being here. Marcy, incredible work, always. Uh, all of the dignitaries, a congressman who came to stand with us, uh, First Lady Tammy Murphy, Assemblywoman Tucker, our councilwoman, her birthday, Commissioner uh, here, Richardson, uh, the folks from Audible, <laughs> uh, Aisha Glover, the people who are trying to hide the, their, their racism under the veil of Audible. And uh, we thank Audible for donating to the park. In fact, we thank Evan and uh, Newark Alliance for supporting this and making sure uh, this park is beautiful. And we need not just Audible, but every uh, institution in this city to donate to this park and make it one of the best and beautiful parks uh, the city has to offer. Um, I want to start at the end, which is uh, Linda Harrison, the CEO of the museum, saying that we should have an arts and education district. I'm saying that's the end because it is the culmination of what all of this will be. In fact, we were doing all of these things and she put the dot on the I, she crossed the T by saying this should be an arts and education district, particularly since the arts institutions are here and all the educational institutions are down here as well. So we go as far up as Martin Luther King Boulevard, all the way down past Mulberry Street, all the way up past Lincoln Park, all the way down this way bringing everybody together in the city to converge in this community, which will be full of art and education. And prayerfully, they get so much art and education down here that they're able to go back in their communities where they live and begin to spread it in those neighborhoods and use it as uh, uh, opportunity to create appendages in those communities where we have more, uh, you know, more art, more education. We even talked about a shuttle that would take people from the Newark libraries all over the city and shuttle them down to this area. I can't wait uh, for something as exciting and incredible as that. But it began because of history. And it's ironic that people are saying that we are infringing or encroaching upon history. Uh, but it began because of history. There was an explosion of history when George Floyd was murdered. He was murdered and, and, and even before that things were swelling up and as a result of that, all over the country, people began to take down statues and remnants of oppression and white supremacy and colonialism, began to pull them down, the fight against the Confederate flag. Why should people have to go in a state house with the Confederate flag flying over their head that symbolizes treason, that symbolizes treason and murder, right, uh, to folks? Why should they have to go pay their taxes in a building that has Robert E. Lee. <laughs> we, we should be doing something about that. So all over the country, this was happening and Newark was not, you know, uh, absolved from that. So in Newark, this happened too and we took a proactive stance. We began to move it so folks wouldn't destroy it. We moved it, we moved the Columbus statue. Uh, yeah, we moved the Columbus statue and there are folks that want to make this about Christopher Columbus I mean, I want to make it about Italian Americans, but it's not about Italian Americans, it's about Christopher Columbus. I don't want you to make uh, our buddy on the Supreme Court about me or black people either. Because what he does is what he does. It has nothing to do with me or my family. And I certainly don't agree with anything he's saying or doing. And would be the first one to remove Clarence Thomas from the Supreme Court if I had a chance to. And so he doesn't represent me, so how can we... I would love to have a, picture, uh, a statue of Viola Luiso, Italian-American who saw racism in the South and instead of watching it on TV, took a trip down South to fight and stand with civil rights workers and was murdered on her way back by the Ku Klux Klan, by the very people we're standing against today. Viola Luiso would be a great statue to put up in Newark uh, here. Or Vito Marcantonio. Congressman from East Harlem who represented poor and black and brown and Italians in East Harlem who fought for equality and justice for all people. I would love to have even a statue of Sacco and Vincetti up who was uh, falsely accused under anti-Italian uh, uh, immigration and, and, and hanged. This 
is not about Italian Americans. It's about Christopher Columbus, who, for all intents and purposes, was the beginning of colonialism and the destruction of Native Americans, and particularly the Taino and the Arawak. So when people say that they're opposed to this, they're opposed to that. They're not opposed to Italian Americans. They're opposed to slavery. They're opposed to colonialism. They're opposed to settlers. They're opposed to that. And any American of any nationality should be opposed to that as well. So it began there. And so we don't want to leave the base like that. And so people are hiding thinly, uh, under a thinly veil, a thin veil of history, their racism and prejudice under a thin veil of history because history is what caused this. History is about perspective. It's about stories and perspective. I had the pleasure of traveling to Gory Island in Senegal. I also had the pleasure to travel to Cape Coast Castle in Ghana. And these are the places, the dungeons where slaves were held before they were shipped over to the U.S., an ugly and horrifying, terrible scene. At the top of those dungeons is a huge and beautiful church on both of them. And people worshipped God above slavery. Now, I have in my mind as a child could not understand that. Now, as an adult, when I visit Cape Coast Castle, I understand that history has different perspectives that the perspective of the preacher in the pulpit above the slave quarters is different than a perspective of the slave in the cave in the dungeon that they were praying, both praying. One was praying to be bountiful and fruitful and the other one in the dungeon was praying for freedom. And those histories don't collide. They actually happened at the same time. So how do you get the courage to tell both of those stories? It is impossible for us to destroy the history of Columbus. There are many thousands of parks across the country, schools, circles, streets named after Columbus. It's impossible to destroy the history of George Washington. There are schools and buildings and streets and squares named after George Washington. And as I hear these people tell the history of George Washington in this area, it almost makes me cringe because they're making the point that I'm trying to make myself. They mentioned the Continental Congress in a retreat uh, here of the revolutionary soldiers uh, and how they recouped and recouped here in Newark and the beautiful behavior of Newarkers to hospitality to, to help them and guide them so that they can fight for freedom and justice. They tell this story beautifully and wonderfully, but they miss something. They forget to put us in the story. And that is why we're here. They forget to put up. What they refuse to say is while freedom was being fought, millions of us were slaves. And that the trails that they walk upon, that they say were Native American trails, were already encroached upon by settlers, not by us who were trying to make history right. Right? They forget that history. And here's the worst history that they forget, that in Mount Vernon, George Washington and his wife, Martha, owned over 300 slaves. Over 300. He inherited eight as a child when his father died. Acres of farmland and eight slaves and purchased more as he got older. Now, he was a kind slave master because he said that slavery was wrong and that it sh he should free his slaves once he died. So when he died, he wrote in his, uh, his will that his slaves should be free, not when he died, but when his wife Martha died, that they were free to slaves, not while he was alive, but when he died. Now, this is real history. This is not a Baraka colloquialism or a poem that I'm making up or a beautiful speech that I'm writing to be fancy today. This is actually history. You can go and read this yourself. I didn't make this up. I didn't write those books. I didn't live then. So this is something that actually happened. And if we have to tell the story of George Washington, then damn it, we ought to tell the story of Harriet Tubman because they exist together. You mean we have to have Washington Street and Washington Park? I mean, we have to have both of those things? Can't we have Washington Street and Tubman Square? Can't they exist? Can't our children contemplate 
intellectually on the history of what happened in this country? Can't we say that Columbus killed Indians? Can't we say that? Is it okay for us to say that? And is it okay for Native Americans to walk down here and say, I don't want to see Columbus in the public square? They have a right to say that. In the, and if you represent those people, you know us black and brown folks who represent the Taino and the Arawak and the Africans who came across the Middle Passage, if we don't have the courage ourselves, 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 to stand up for our own history, then we should not require anybody else to do it. So that's why we're here today. And guess what? We're going to have a great time in this area. Uh, it's going to be a beautiful park. The, the area is going to be Harriet Tubman Square. It's going to be the Arts and Education District. Like Evan said, people are going to be traveling all around to visit this place. Uh, and it was actually created out of history. And that's what I wanted to make clear today. And finally, this is not about black people. I want to close on that. This is not a Black Lives Matter plot that somebody wrote on the chat. This is not about black people. This is about Americans who believe in democracy, who want to who abolish slavery and interdependence, who, who believe that all Americans should enjoy democracy and that history should be told from all of our perspectives, who disagree with burning books and taking uh, history out of classrooms. Who, who don't hide by saying their racism, by saying, oh, you're going to destroy history, when they know full and well that our kids learn all of this history all of the time and know very little about Harriet Tubman. All Americans. This is about America. As, as our First Lady put it, this is about America and Americans who believe in the promises that America wrote. We want them to keep them. That's it. So I didn't mean to uh, bum you out this morning. Never that, never that. I just, I just had some things to say. I didn't get a chance to say everything on the forum where they were trying to stop us from doing this. Uh, and I listened to everybody get up back to back and tell history, and nobody told our history. Not a single person got up there and told our history. Not one person. It just saddened me that people got so angry uh, and upset that we were trying to do this. Imagine how the slave felt in the dungeon, being taken away from his family, his God, to be spirited all the way across this place, here. And God remembers. As a matter of fact, all of the hurricanes that visit upon us have their origins at the, what they call uh, uh, right there at the foot of Ghana right where uh, the slave dungeon's door lets out. The, the moist air mixes with the heat from the Sahara Desert and it forms there the beginning of these storms and these storms actually take the same pathway that those slave ships came and they land right here on these shores in the Caribbean and in North America. It lands here. It lands here, and I just think it's uh, uh, what Toni Morrison was saying, just remembering the path, the places that they've already been. God didn't forget us. He didn't forget us. Don't you forget yourself. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Baraka. Thank you for setting the record straight, for explaining to people exactly what is going on here. I want to say thank you to everybody for coming out today. Thank you to all of our dignitaries and speakers. Uh, please go out and tell the world what is happening here in Newark, New Jersey, what is happening here at Harriet Tubman Square, what is happening in our arts and education district. We truly are moving Newark forward, and thank you all for being a part of this. Thank you.
We love to see you smile, Nork. This is Tiffany Salas reporting with Channel 78 Nork TV News. We are here with... Pat Council, the current Director of Recreation, Cultural Fair, Senior Services and Parks, and the Councilman-elect for the South Ward of this great city, Newark, New Jersey. How are you? I'm well, Pat Council. Lovely to hear uh, that you were here at the park. I'm glad we were able to get an interview with you. What was your role here uh, with the Harriet Tubman uh, Park Initiative? Well, as the Director of Recreation, Cultural Fairs, and Senior Services, uh, we played a very vital role in helping to uh, not just rename, but try to refocus uh, Washington Park for the long run uh, in terms of redeveloping and making sure that this is a place and space uh, where families and community members can come out and enjoy alike. And so we just look forward to not just the renaming and the excitement uh, that we bring to the historical perspective of naming this park, but also to the redevelopment of Washington Park, uh, where our community can have another safe place to play and enjoy themselves. Well, first of all, this is a glorious day here in Newark, New Jersey, as we have our newly renamed Washington Park, is now Harriet Tubman Square. What a great day. It's beautiful. The sun is shining. I believe that our ancestors, all of them, are smiling down at us right now because we truly have had a day of reckoning and reconciling the true history of liberation and freedom in our country, and particularly here in Newark, New Jersey. Uh, now, Ms. John, we'd like to know um, what inspired you and what impacted you on wanting to be a part of this historic initiative. Well, really, Harriet Tubman's story is the greatest of the inspiration. Not only the kind of heroic, legendary story that we know of her being a conductor on the Underground Railroad, but what that actually means. The fact that once she made it to freedom, that wasn't enough for her. She wanted to come back and bring the rest of her family and her community. And that signified to me community is probably the most important part of that story. The community of the network of the Underground Railroad that was able to share the secrets of the codes and the safe houses and the ways, the safe paths to freedom. That's the community that supported the work that Harriet Tubman did. And so in designing the monument, I wanted to create or enable that same community spirit in this space. Uh, Dr. Kelly, tell me how you felt today about hearing about Harriet Tubman Square and all, the, all of the plans for the Newark uh, Arts District and uh, Education District. I am super excited. Uh, I live right here on James Street and I am just overwhelmed that finally uh, we get to name our park uh, Harriet Tubman Square. Uh, the history, uh, the um, culture that just the name brings to our, to our city. Uh, it's something that is long overdue and I'm just really happy that I'm standing here today and that our mayor has uh, uh, done this education. Um, thank you uh, mayor and thank you city of Newark. About time.